All right, here are solutions to quiz two from Math 243. I gave you some data. I gave you 20 observations. Didn't tell you a story this time because I wasn't feeling like it. Uh, and the first thing I ask you to do is summarize this data with a stem and leaf plot. So in order to do that, what you have to do is think about the last digit in each of these numbers as the leaf and all other digits as the stem. And so the smallest stem will be a 4 and the largest stem will be a 10 for this 107 here. And so I'll start with 4 and then I'll write all the numbers, even if I don't have observations there. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to my largest stem, which was, again, the 10. And then what I want to do is draw a leaf for each observation. So this 45 would give me a little 5 right here. This 58 give me a little 8 right here. There's nothing in the 60s. 70, I got a 74. I guess that's all. 80s, I got an 83 and an 89. 90s, I got a 90 and 91. 94, 6, and 7. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 98. A 99. And then 100s, I got 102, 103, 4, 5, and 7. And if you want, maybe I'll say optional, is to have a little legend in here and say something like 7, 4 means uh, 74 of whatever is going on in this case. A little legend is a good idea when you're making a stem and leaf plot. Otherwise, the reader doesn't know if this 7 and 4 represent 74 or 7.4 or something else. Uh, so summarize the data with the stem and leaf plot, something like this. What's important is that these are decreasing and that you have this six in here as a placeholder. And the reason why is because then this kind of looks like a sideways histogram and you can still get an idea of the shape of the data. Even though I don't ask you for the shape in part A, it's important that you do that. B, sketch a histogram of this data where the smallest bin contains the observations that are greater than or equal to 44 and less than 52. Uh, okay, so you can either do this by hand or using your calculator. I'd recommend you use your calculator, but you do whatever makes you happy. Um, I'm going to have my smallest bin go from 44 up to 52. So what that tells me is that my minimum in my calculator will be 44 and that my bin size will be 8, the distance between these two numbers. So after 52, it'll go up to 60, and then from 60, it'll go to 68, and then from 68, it'll go to 76, and from 76, it'll go to 84. And while well, I got to go all the way up to 107, I better give myself a lot more room. 84 plus 8 gives me, what, 92? And 92 plus 8 gives me 100. 100 plus 8 gives me 108. And I guess that's enough because my biggest observation is 107. And so you could just go through and count how many observations you have in each bin, or you can get a calculator. I'll back out of this a little bit. I already put the data in just so you don't have to watch me put data in. But the way you do that is you hit the stat button. Uh-oh, did I clear everything out? On. Hit the stat button, and you go into the edit menu, and type them all into a list. So you'll note that these observations are put in right here. Hopefully I didn't screw anything up. Uh, and then you want to create a stat plot, so you hit second and then y equals, that takes you in here. You'll note that all these stat plots are off, I want to have one of them on. We'll turn that guy on first. And then I'll say, what type do you want? I don't want a scatter plot or a line graph, I want this histogram here. So I'll highlight the third one and hit enter. And then it'll ask me what uh, list I put my data in. I put mine in L1, so I don't need to change this. And then this frequency, I always just told you to leave this as a default as one. This is if you want to keep track of the number of times a given observation occurs in a different list, you can do that with this function here. But we don't ever do that, so you can always leave this as one for our purposes. Um, you could go to graph now, but it won't have the bin sizes right. So what I'm going to do is hit this window key. Um, and tell it that I want my x values, the minimum to be 44, and the maximum, well, it looked like in my picture here, the largest bin went up to 108, so maybe I'll put that in for my max. And the x scale, this one's important, this is whatever your bin size is, so in this case it's 8. Y minimum, I usually make this 0 when I'm making a histogram, you don't have to, but it just makes it look prettier. And then your y maximum is the maximum number of observations you'll have in a given bin. Say so I got 20 total, most of them are over on the side. I bet I have, oh, maybe 10 is about right. We'll take a look at that and then we'll change it if need be. How do you take a look? You hit this graph key. Hit graph, bam, there's my histogram. Thing of beauty. Uh, it tells me that my first bin has one observation, as did my second bin. Uh, maybe I should make one a little higher here. There's one, and there's one. Uh, I lost my calculator. I think I can click there and it'll pop back up. 
And then I have nothing in the next bin. And I can even trace these to make sure that they really do go where I thought they would. The one from 60 to 68 has nothing. And then two more ones, and then a three. So there's another one, there's another one, and then one, two, three, maybe. We'll call this one, two, three. Sure. Uh, and then I get all the way up to eight, and then back down to five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is this guy? And then back down to five, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Something like that. Sketch a histogram of the data where the smallest bin contains observations that are greater than or equal to 44 and less than 52. Looks like I just did that. Determine the mean and median of this data. Sure. Uh, since I already have the data in my calculator, all I have to do is hit the stat key and then go over to calc. Mean and median both come out of one variable statistics, which is the first thing in this list here, so I'll hit enter. One variable statistics. Yeah, but where's your data? Well, my data is in L1, so I'll hit second and one to get L1 in there. Uh, it turns out that if you don't put any list in, it'll default you to L1, so I didn't have to do that. But just in case your data was in L2 and you're following along, I wanted to do that. Hit enter. It's going to give me some information. X bar, which is my mean. is equal to uh, 91.45 and my median if I scroll down a little bit there it is uh, is 97.5 make sure I copy those correctly yep looks good determine the mean and the median of this data there done which measure of center is more appropriate in this case so here's one of those theoretical questions. Uh, which is better? Median is better. Why? Median is better because my data is skewed. Um, in this case, it's left skewed. Um, I guess that's about it. I just told you in class that anytime your data is approximately normal, the mean is the better measure, and anytime your data is skewed, the median is the better measure. And really what's going on here is 97.5 right in here is your median. That feels about right. Um, the mean, 91.45, uh, is way down here. What happened are these observations that were really, really low really pulled my mean down a lot, and it made it lower than where the center really is which happens when you have skewed data, which is why we use the median in that case. Give an example of data you'd expect to be approximately normal. Um, IQ is approximately normal uh, because most people have an IQ near mean, near average, and it is roughly equally probable, probable to be a given distance above or below mean. Um, I doubt anyone writes this on their test. But that basic idea is what I'm getting at. Make sure you understand what approximately normal is. Give another example of data you'd expect to be skewed. Well, the example that we talked about in class, household income. Is typically uh, what right skewed, I suppose. Because most people... make, I don't know, um, 40 to 140 K per year. Um, but some make much, much more than that. Must be nice. I don't. <laughs> That's what I get for teaching. Uh, give an example of data that you expect to be approximately normally distributed. That's that first one. And another example of data that you expect to be skewed. There's that one. Make sure to state which direction your skewed data is skewed towards. Skewed right. Cool. Um, 
Justify your examples enough to make it clear that you know what you're talking about. Hopefully that's clear enough that I know what I'm talking about. So I think I'm going to end this video here.